Is it true that you have, because you do all these characters, that you have photographs of them? Yeah. Do you have photographs of your other personas? Like do, framed? So. Yes. yes! <laughs> and by the way, I'm in a I'm in a temporary place right now. And as you walk in, it's lined up. It's like the wall of Tracy, like all the versions of me. There's Madame Iver is, is a, a really special one that I have performed as, done things as. Mm. She I used to post her videos all the time. And then uh Calliope Champignon has her own page. She is a, a fashion architect, not a stylist. Um <laughs> she's not French, but she only she only speaks with a French accent, but <laughs> she can't speak French at all. But... No knowledge of French. No, the French she's language. actually from Detroit, but uh, <laughs> but she does. Uh, That's a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> but she is very connected to the French accent. Yeah. I uh... treat. <laughs> Which part made you laugh that hard? My mother? <laughs> no, no, the Detroit part. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. from Detroit. Detroit, but that's a thick French accent. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> I'm curious about something because you did your first big success, which is Girlfriends, right? You're doing that mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. And then that show ends. And I always thought, right, you went right into blackish. Oh, no, God, no. And that's how other people can experience your career. Yeah. Like when I think about you, I think of just, oh, I, uh, since the first time I heard your name, you've been a success, but there was a, <laughs> but seriously, that's how it can feel to other people. Yeah. And there was like a six year gap or something there between was a gap, girlfriend he... and black and, and, and blackish. What, because because when you're when I'm around you, it just seems so obvious that there should be a camera on you all the time. What do you think happened in that? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, I think some of it, you know, is the segregation of Hollywood and right. uh, UPN then turned into CW and we were on what is considered a black show. So there were so many people who knew our show and we were a huge success, but there were also the majority of the industry did not. Got it. And so I really did think after being on a show that I considered a hit uh, that was so beloved for eight years as the lead that uh, the pearly gates of Hollywood were going to open when it finished. Mm-hmm. They did not. They were yeah. locked. There were no scripts. There was nothing. And and um, that's actually when I started moving my characters more to the forefront and uh, doing the other things that I do. And... Then I did a show on BET called Read Between the Lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did that for, I want to say, a year and a half. But even before Girlfriends, so Lyricist Lounge came first, uh, which was a hip-hop sketch comedy show. It was fantastic. Um, Really fun. Did a lot of characters on there. Uh, But preceding that were years and years of auditioning, being dropped from the Gersh agency. The woman, the agent said to me, (laughs) she said... You just don't pop. Oh. <laughs> she said, you come with all these things, these bells and whistles. You're pretty. Your mom's famous. You have good style. But then you get in the room and nothing happens. So we're going to drop you. Oof. I mean, I carried that punch for so long. I was like, oh, a person who doesn't pop. But I'm you... a non-popping person. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, like, you need to pop as an actor. You gotta pop. I, I couldn't pop. Isn't it, isn't it crazy, though, how when time goes by and then you look at those statements, yeah. it's it's so appallingly wrong, and it's making me think of, we had Harrison Ford was sitting in the chair you're in, and he was talking mm-hmm. about how um, he was talking about you know, he's had Harrison Ford success, which is insane. insane. But he remembers the guy's name who told him oh, in, the ni- in the 1960s. Oh. And he remembered exactly what he told him. Gary uh, Tukovsky? No, Jerry Tukovsky. Jerry Tukovsky. Jerry Tukovsky. <laughs> he and he kept so saying his times. name over and over again. But it was still a burning coal lodged right under his sternum. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, well, wouldn't like at least two of the Indiana Jones movies have gotten rid of that burning <laughs> hatred? <laughs> Forget the other two. Like, no. And what I know, just because it's human nature, is uh, those things still yeah, burn even still. years even years later. Yeah, I remember. Th- uh, there's a couple. You you know, they, we all have them. I think my mom has one. Like everybody's got them, and they you know to a certain extent they become your fuel. Um, and mm-hmm. they help you answer questions or they take you down. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I, I think I've transcended. I think I pop. I hope I pop. I'm a, I want to pop. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you, you pop. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I want to pop. I love that yeah. you're. <laughs> yeah. 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 You were one of you... the first, um, 
like late night shows that I went on. But I remember when I was on Girlfriends, I could not get on a late night show. Hmm. And I remember the Tonight Show. It was Jay Leno at the time and the talent booker. I will never forget what she said because I asked, I was like, you have to tell me. I don't understand. You have to tell me. And they kept saying, call us when she gets something. And I was like, but like what? Like you right. guys got to tell me what I got to go get because like I don't get it. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. but those are the kinds of things that they become this mystery that you. There's a f very frustrating thing. I remember when I first got out to Los Angeles in 1985 mm. and I was a kid, not a kid, but but to me, I felt like a kid. And now I look like a really little kid. Uh, but uh, I got out here. I remember there was this catch 22 of, well, you can't get a job. Mm. I wanted to break in as a writer. You can't get a job as a writer unless you're. Uh, you have an agent and no agent wants to see you unless, unless you, you have a job. It's insane. And you can't get a job if you're not in the union, but the union won't give let you in the union unless you have a job. Yes. And so I remember thinking there's really, this is impossible. And there are these things that you encounter early on. And, you know, I'm saying this as a white male. Like, yeah. so yeah. I had as, I'll be open, I had about as greased a track as anyone can have in yeah. at, at that, you know, at that and time. And still. Yeah. Uh, and um, but now I'm old. So uh, what was your first writing job? I worked on a show called Not Necessarily the News, which yeah, was like I remember that on HBO. And this was the HBO where my parents didn't have HBO. So I was trying to tell them you can go to a motel. <laughs> Uh, there's, a, there's a motel on Commonwealth <laughs> Avenue, and if you check in um, as Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you can you can maybe watch one of my sketches. But I didn't even know we were so separated from the show. We would just write our sketches, submit them, and then maybe they'd show up on the show, or maybe they wouldn't. We oh, weren't neat. even present for the the uh, the you know casting of the sketch or how it was made. Wow. But it was great. It was a great first job. It got me in, but. Uh, I remembered thinking this is tricky and I didn't have a, a fraction of the difficulties that you're talking about yeah, it's where real, you're saying it's I've been on a show, but mm -hmm. it's considered a black show mm -hmm. and the rest of the industry doesn't seem to recognize. Yeah, that. it's it was uh, the realization of some of those things were fascinating. I remember on Blackish, I went to do my first looping session, my first ADR session and the sound guy. They had said, you know, he's a very famous sound guy. He just done all the shows. He's big at all the studios and da, da, da. And he was like, I just, I mean, you're, it's like you're like a seasoned vet. I just loved seeing such a newcomer be so, look like you're so experienced. I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, I mean, you've never been on a show. And I said, no, 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 no. I, I was on a show. Well, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a comedy. And I was like, no, no, it was a comedy, but it wasn't prime time. Said, no, 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 it was prime time. He went through the whole list. Right. He's like, but you weren't the lead. And I was like, no, but I. But Jesus, I, he's wrong about I, every I single like, thing. Oh my God, this is, is this yeah. a comedy routine? Are you a plant? <laughs> but you're not a woman. <laughs> yes, I am a woman. Well, your name's not Tracy, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, my God, I've got to go look up this show. I was like, yeah, you should just go look it up. Yeah, maybe oh my you God. should shut up. I was like, so. my God. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a fascinating, the industry is, you know, it, it is, but it is also interesting to think of how it's changed. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, um, growing up and having three networks or whatever it was, and then all of a sudden you get a new one, there was UPN and the, you know what I mean? And now it's just, I mean... I don't even know where to go to find things. I have to Google the name of the show that someone told me. So, and where do you stream it? <laughs> I write. And then sometimes it still doesn't give me good right. answers. It gives me all these things. And I'm like, I don't know what to do here. I will often figure out where it is, the thing I want to see. And then I will go to that streamer that I know that we are signed up for. Yes. But it will say, no, I'm not letting you in unless it, you unless you give me the 75 different passcodes. And my <laughs> wife knows those and I don't. And often I crumple to my knees and a camera <laughs> lifts up to the ceiling and I go, no! Like, God himself has betrayed me. And it's just like, no, oh my I'm- my God. I mean, fairly, just text your wife. Exa no, she I doesn't no allow that. Blame. She doesn't allow that anymore. I just, ta I take the remote and I'm like, yeah. I just get so angry. I'm like, I, I just want to watch the show. Like, but you yes. can't get in. Yeah.
And or I, then I it know tells they already you, have my money. They already have my yes, money. I or signed it says, up. It says you don't have that version of, I'm like, what do you mean? I ha- I swear to God, I <laughs> paid the version. I don't, I did it last time. I can't. Where is the show? I love. I hate it. I love knowing that nobody escapes this. It's Meaning insane. the thing that I love is nobody escapes it. And uh, I remembered uh, once talking to President Obama on uh, this podcast and he was, I, I don't know if it was even off mic, but he started talking about how he remember being in the Oval Office and like they couldn't get the phone to work and like two people came in and like, you're the... You're in the Oval Office. He had to get on customer service yeah, with exactly. Spectrum Internet himself <laughs> and stay on oh, Barack? Barack? B- Barack? It's CK. Yeah. Not just a K. It's just CK. 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 Representative. Oh. Representative. <laughs> Representative. <laughs> Press one. Yeah. Yes. Are you a sitting president? <laughs> Press one. They even have a whole president <laughs> section. Right. Uh, That's a great bit. Are you a two-term or one-term president? Oh Jesus. God. And then you try and have someone else do it. I'm so sorry. We'll have to speak to the actual person. Who yes. the bill. No, it's so yes. funny because it made me happy. And then when we, uh, when I talked to Biden recently and he invited me into the Oval Office, all I could do was stare at the phone. He, and he, guess what? It looks like a phone anywhere. Well, it's what if just Biden, a f- of all people, was super tech savvy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <just> like, <laughs> Oh, I got it all on a universal remote. I programmed it myself. It's all on an app. I check it out. He, he's like, I control it from my phone. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I made an app. You made an app? Are yeah. you familiar with Oculus Rift? <laughs> Be great if he was the most tech savvy president that's of all a, time. That's actually a gr- that's great. I, I wish that were so. I, I really do. Hey, yeah. you know. Ninety-nine point nine percent chance it isn't, but you never know. You never know.